a very difficult working relationship with his ecumenical colleague in the church that they led together. At last it was time for the Methodist minister to leave. No more would he have to endure the stubbornness and the ignorance of his ecumenical colleague. The pastor led the final service for the minister and halfway through invited the Methodist minister to preach his final sermon. Getting up to the pulpit, the Methodist minister in his usual way gave the congregation his text for the sermon. Genesis chapter 2 verse 5, he declared, Abide you here with the ass and I will go yonder. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have no text for you this afternoon. Just a series of things to think about or challenges. First of all, I want to say, keep together. Many years ago, a little ship put out from Plymouth, bound on a great adventure. The pelican was her name, too soon to be changed to the Golden Hound, perhaps more fitting for her great adventures. On the first morning on, out to sea, the captain called the boatswain to pipe all hands to the deck. And when everyone had gathered from the crew, he addressed them. He didn't make a long speech. It wasn't the way of Francis Drake, the captain. Rather, he told them about the uncertainty of the future, the hardships that no doubt they would go through together, the difficulties and the successes that they would enjoy as a crew. He called for each person to work hard for the good of the other. And then he reminded everyone from the ship's boy to himself, the captain, that we were all were held in the hands of God. Finally, he gave them a motto for the voyage and the adventure that was about to begin. Be all, he said, of one company. What a motto for a voyage, what a challenge for us in our churches and chapels and Christian lives. Now you might be thinking, well, how can we be of one company? We are a circuit of many different chapels, of different communities. You look around you today, no one, thank God, is like you or me, and yet all of us are made in the image of God. You are utterly different from the person sat next to you. Go and have a look. <laughs> different personalities and gifts, different ages, weaknesses, tests, and probably quite glad of it. Some of us are parents, some of us are at school or college, Others of us are working in paid or voluntary capacity. Some are truly retired. How can such a mixed bag, and I say that with great respect, <laughs> be of one company? We can't unless we have a common bond. The thing that holds us together is the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is true for congregations and chapels and the circuits. Keep him central to all you do, and then, despite our differences, we can be of one company together. Secondly, remember that what you are part of is something much bigger than your individual chapel or church. Although I'm a bit loathed to use this next phrase, the truth is there for all of us. You'll never walk alone. The anthem of Liverpool Football Club and the COP can be enlarged and become the national anthem for our churches. Because we are never alone as Christians when we're joined in the fellowship of the church and even when we travel in our lives, sometimes we might feel we are alone, yet God is always with us. And the wonderful thing about it is that it's not just your particular Methodist chapel. 
Never think you are alone, either in this circuit, in the world, or in your own individual life. For we stand with millions of other Christians across the world. We're part of a church that has family in South Africa, Canada, New Zealand, Korea, Ukraine, and Argentina. Not only the Methodist variety, but some of them would call themselves Anglicans, Baptists, Orthodox, Independent, Pentecostal, Roman Catholic, and many more. Thousands of Christians all over the world, all of our company, all with the Christian badge on their foreheads proclaiming Christ is Lord. So you are part of something small yet something enormous. Part of a great Christian family of the universal church. And you, you will never walk alone. Thirdly, I'd like to suggest to you, don't be obsessed with looking back, but look forward. Sunday the 17th of July today, isn't it strange how tomorrow, today will be yesterday? The present is a moving line between the past and the future. In the Bible in Luke chapter 17, Jesus is talking about the coming of the kingdom and being prepared for it, and he uses a phrase that is intriguing. He says, remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife has the shortest biography in the Bible. A blunt and condemning account of the calamity that came upon the second woman in the Bible who is disobedient towards God. So the writer of Genesis records what Lot's wife looked behind her and she turned into a pillar of salt. We have shared so much as a circuit over just the 11 years that I've been so much more over many other years. It's been good and a privilege to be one of the ministers in this circuit over those last 11 years. But the last thing I would want to happen when I leave would be for people to say, when Cameron was here, <laughs> because that is a Lot's wife mentality and you will turn to a pillar of salt. <laughs> Try to sense a moving forward rather than a looking back. Remember at the ascension, in Luke's Gospel, at the beginning of Acts, once Jesus has ascended into heaven, the disciples are stood there looking for Jesus in their midst. They're reluctant to let Jesus go because they know that things have to change. And they're brought to earth with a bump when two men in white appear to them and say, Galileans, while you're looking into the heavens, move on. It's like they wanted to hold the moment rather than forge third forge forward into the future. Friends, yes, celebrate what has been, but don't keep looking back or holding on to what has been. God is certainly moving us forward, and I believe through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has even greater times open for us all together. It's not dependent upon me, it's not my kingdom, Rather, it's about opening ourselves up to the power of the Holy Spirit and not just getting bogged down remembering the past. The same God, our helper, says the writer to the Hebrews, who has been with us in the last few years and who is with you now, challenges us to move on and progress into the future. Because it's the, he is the same God, yesterday, today and forever. Remember Lord's wife. 
And finally, I invite you to reach out to your local communities in service with the love of God. The image of the church is a powerful image. It is a living image. In most of the images that the New Testament writers use of the church, they're always in the plural, and more often than not, they're living beings. The bride of Christ, sheep of a flock, the living vine and its branches. The church is an organism that lives and breathes and grows, not an organisation that stagnates. And the church is essentially a corporate movement. We cannot do it on our own, we do it together. I like what somebody once said, it's better to think of the church as something we experience like heat or light, rather than as the thing that supplies the energy, namely the utility So God's given us the church, this living organism, for our good, but also for the good of others. The church is not an end in itself, rather it should be committed to the cosmic task of sharing God's love in Christ to everyone and every anyone. The church exists, not for our benefit, but for those outside. There was a saintly bishop in the Church of South India, Bishop Azariah, who knowing how easy it is for churches to become a bit insular and look after themselves, got each person that was brought into the membership of that church to take a further vow in their confirmation service. And to emphasise it, he made them put their hands on their heads and say solemnly, Woe am I if I don't preach and live the good news of Christ. Sometimes the bishop was asked how it was possible for such simple people in the faith to be witnesses to Christ. And he replied that if a person only knows one Bible story, they can still go and tell it to someone else and then return and learn another one. We are called as members of Christ's body to be witnesses. For to be sure, if we don't take Christ to the world, no one else will. The body of Christ is a living organism in action, moving out of itself to share by being witnesses the good news that Christ is alive today and forever. So our church doors are not marked private, <laughs> holy club. We have a very public duty to share our faith with all our neighbours. So that's what I offer to you today, four challenges. Unity, community, vision and witness. We don't close today a wonderful book begun. We open a new chapter in the life of our chapels and circuits. And together, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we move forward in the knowledge that God is with us yesterday, 